Good afternoon. Hey, my name's Nick Barbarian. I have the privilege of serving as the uh, rear commodore here at the Chicago Yacht Club, and it is truly my privilege to welcome all of you to the 109th Race to Mackinac. Welcome. This is truly a multi-generational event, built so many relationships amongst families and friends for over decades. I'm sure those relationships and memories will be all added to over the next several days by all of you and wishing you the best of luck. Just wanted to start off by uh, thanking some of the people that make all of this possible for all of you. I'd like to start with our MAC committee. Our MAC committee has over 20 people that serve on it all year round. It takes about a solid year to plan this event. They're gonna start on next year's very soon. Uh, they've been working very hard and it's chaired by Don Maxwell. I wanna give him a big hand. Our, our race committee here at the Chicago Yacht Club, we're very fortunate to have over 100 people on our race committee it is chaired by Nancy Arnold. And for today's race, uh, our race director is Hella Getz, and our PRO is Olaf Anderson. So let's give all of them a big round of applause. <clears throat> We've put together a fine panel of judges for you. Our chief judge is Fred Hagedorn. You'll be seeing and hearing from him in a few moments, and he's put together a great panel for you as well. So let's give them a big round. Our Chief Safety Inspector, Lisa Gaston, I know she's inspected a number of your boats here, both here and on the island. They've been very busy, and let's, let's give them a thanks. <clears throat> Our Chief Measure, Ron White, also has been very busy for the race and getting it all ready. Let's give him a big round. And finally, our uh, on-the-water director, Jay Kehoe, fresh back from the America's Cup, and Libby Dust, our regatta manager, all coordinating all the on-the-water activities for the weekend and the, the week. Let's give them a big round. <clears throat> our friends from the Coast Guard that are going to be accompanying all of you up along the way, lake, let's give them a big thanks. Advance. And the staff from the Chicago Yacht Club who've made all this available to you in our on-land facilities both here and back when we get back on the island on Mackinac. Let's give them a big round. And uh, finally, our sponsors, uh, our uh, presenting sponsor, Wintrust, and all of our supporting sponsors, the financial support they uh, provide to make all of these resources available to you. Let's give them a big thanks. At the end of the day, however, this race is all about you, about each and every one of you. So have a great race. We'll see you on the island. And looking forward to seeing you back next year for the 110th. To that, I turn it over to Don Maxwell. Thank you. And turn this up a little bit here. There we go. Uh, thanks. And, you know, it is a year-wrong effort, as Nick was saying there, and the committee's put a lot of work, and they have my personal thanks on there. But I want to thank all you guys here for coming out. We've got 300 boats here tonight, and, you know, you spend a year planning these things. It's like that party when you're all ready and you're waiting for the guests to show up, and thank you all for showing up. I hope we put on a good race for you. A um, couple of quick announcements in through here. Uh, the, the first one is just by a, a means of, of a formal disclosure here is that the, the skippers meeting is a uh, it, it's a courtesy in through here. If there's anything you hear tonight that is in any way conflict with the documents being the sailing instructions and the NOR, the documents are the ones that are the official pieces through here. So if there's any confusion on that, go back to the paperwork because that's where really where we need to go on that. Um, one people that a group of people that I need to point out to you guys, and I know you, you've seen the signs up and you've been enjoying some of their wares out here, but we really got to give a good thanks out to our sponsors here. And I'm, I need to list just a few of them so you know really what's going on and, and what they can offer to you here. Um, of course, we've got our presenting sponsor, Wind Trust. You've seen them on, on the name here. And then we've also got Beam Centauri as one of our alcohol sponsors here, and uh, the CFA, that's the Chartered Financial Analyst Society of Chicago. Now, one of the ones that you'll see over here is our, cl our clothing line, which is, uh, which is Gill. A lot of great stuff. I know I've been spending some money off in there. And it's, uh, they've got their tent set up over here, and they're being supported by Team One Newport. So you can see Martha in there if you, if you need anything. And they are doing some embroidery in the 
in the uh, club here if they don't have your sizes. But just a quick run through, we, we've got, of course, Remy Quantreau, which is Mount Gay back here again, and they'll be doing some pours here soon. Um, Harkin, Michigan Avenue Magazine, and if you guys got shore people on, we're doing the parade of boats at the end of Navy Pier for tomorrow's start. So you can go down there, we'll have some commentary and some, some fun things going on there. Then we've got Heineken, the Grand Hotel, Starline, and with Starline, they've got discounts for anybody who's going on and off island. I sent out some emails earlier today for their discount codes if you want to use them for their tickets. Sunology, North Central Air, Tattinger, Squid, Chateau Desclans, West System, Hyatt Hotel, and U.S. Sailings are around here too. And they had their buzz bar going here this morning. So if you wouldn't mind, a big round of applause for our sponsors in through here. I sent out a link to the skipper and crew here today, just as a way to follow the race. Please share it with your shoreside crew or use it for yourself here. We've got YB tracking back here again. And I also sent out for anyone running uh, Expo or any other routing software, all the low bandwidth links in that too. So you should be able to find that in that packet to help you out going up the lake here. But we've also got on our YouTube channel, we've got Win Sadani back doing color commentary. And a, then of course the regular Twitter, Twitter, Twitter and uh, Facebook posts coming up here. Little tongue tied here. Um, one more through, and I think I may be. Uh, before I pass it off, one quick announcement here. Uh, the city's always got so much going on. Tomorrow they are doing a foot race uh, up and down the lake shore here. It's called the Rock and Roll Marathon. It's only a 5K, but it's going to make things a little bit busier on the lakefront. So I'd give yourselves an extra 20, 30 minutes coming down to the boats in the morning just as, a, you know, make sure you're not fighting the runners off as you come in. I'm going to pass it over to our Chief Judge, Fred Hagedorn, here. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Good race. Uh, thank you, Don. I uh, want to wish you all the very best luck going up the uh, lake and see you in 333 miles. Uh, first off, I'd like to recognize our two other judges, uh, Don Makovicki from uh, Long Island and Steve Wrigley from uh, North Carolina. We hope to see you all at the parties, and that's the only place we hope to see you. Have a great ride. <laughs> and with that, the, uh, the most important people for getting the race started, our race committee and our PRO, uh, Olaf Anderson. going to introduce two people that are helping me to do all this work for me and it's Hala Getz who is the regatta director and Vicky Matthews who is my deputy race officer and since Hala Getz knows <laughs> I'm do the flag too. This is the course marshal flag. They will be somewhere around you, and they may come and tell you to move somewhere. It means that you are not supposed to be where, where you are at that point. <laughs> and that's the starting flag, just regular orange. And I am, since there is Hella Gets knows a lot more about the starting procedure and the checking procedure than I do, so I'm going to let her do that. So, the parade of boats. This is the first place that we would like to see all of you going past the end of Navy Pier. We have up a diagram for you and what it is that you will be looking for. The arrows indicate your pattern to go past the end. And then from there, you will go straight out east to the wall and make sure that you check in with your uh, signboards, right? Sailboards. Sailboards, and go between the Liberty, which is the picture of the boat that's right there, and the mark. And from there, you will go on out to the starting area. As you're approaching up to the starting area, please, we ask that you stay behind the box so that you don't interfere in the other sections that are starting. We do have 19 sections starting tomorrow. This is a picture of what boats to look for at what end. 
Carrier, of course, is our signal boat, and Anna Marie will be our pin boat. And of course, with our uh, Biscayne Bay, the Coast Guard cutter that will be escorting the fleet on your trip up. And that's a simple, simple diagram of the box. There'll be two green marks at the outside, the back end of the box. And the top end will be our signal boat and the pin boat. That's what the pin boat looks like. And that, of course, is another up close picture of carrier docked right behind us here. And the next picture, I guess that's it for us. You have all received the Open Me Under the Bridge envelope. Please make sure that you do take a look at that. It has a lot of helpful hints for you when you finally get yourself up to the bridge. Have a great safe trip, and we'll see you up at the island. Thank you. my little sheet here, our chief measure, Ron White. Good afternoon. Is uh, Nathan Titcomb in the house? I guess not. Um, you may have seen Nathan around. Uh, he's the offshore director. Uh, for U.S. sailing, and they're great. They've always been great partners in helping us to get this race off uh, with how they process and issue certificates. Um, they did the buzz bar this morning and gave uh, coffee to everybody that stopped by. I think they're doing that again tomorrow morning. So many thanks to Nathan and the, uh, the offshore office. Um, I've been told I had to expedite my comments, so uh, you know I, I, I've been studying all these newfangled communication techniques. And in honor of our commander in chief, I've decided to tweet the wind mix to uh, hashtag measure this. <laughs> uh, th this year's uh, model was truly so easy; even a caveman could do it. Um, and in fact, even Tim Prophet on Fast Tango agreed with me. So it's uh, uh, offshore uh, or Chicago Mac all purpose. And as Bob Hughes just commented to me upstairs, this will be a manly experience. Um, so good luck to everybody. Um, it's my pleasure uh, once again, after many years of uh, repeat performances, to introduce what, uh, you know, who has to be the best uh, weather forecaster for sailors uh, in the world. He's about to uh, do his thing again for uh, the next Volvo race, and we wish him the best with that. It's my pleasure to introduce Chris Bedford. I'm going mobile. There we go. Seriously, don't you have anything better to do? Look at you. <laughs> All right, thanks, it's good to be back again. And it uh, looks like a really interesting race, actually. Um, and uh, gonna get a little bit of everything is probably the best way to, to describe it. Um, and uh, I always wanna point this out that uh, I'm giving you a briefing as the weather looks right now, but as we all know, having sailed on the Great Lakes, the weather can change very quickly, very dramatically, so you have to uh, keep your eyes out. And uh, if something doesn't look right, it probably isn't. Uh, and you should monitor the uh, NOAA broadcasts on your VHF uh, in case there's any advisories or warnings uh, that are necessary. Right now, things don't look too bad, other than uh, there will be some brisk winds and some rough seas. There is an outside chance of some thunderstorms moving onto the lake tomorrow uh, evening, and so you'll want to keep an eye on that. Uh, but just make sure you're getting those official broadcasts um, so you know if anything is coming. So here is the official severe weather outlook for tomorrow. And uh, you'll notice that uh, there is an area highlighted for slight risk of severe thunderstorms tomorrow. Uh, 
more tomorrow evening uh, across Wisconsin and extends into the lake as a marginal area of severe storms. Right now, as I said, it doesn't look too bad, but you should be ready for that in the event that uh, things start to change. By Sunday, that all moves out to the east, and it looks like we have good, good weather conditions on Sunday. And uh, then on Monday, uh, the Weather Service has adopted one of my favorite meteorological forecast terms, which is predictability too low. Um, that's my standard fallback position. All right, the uh, surface weather map as of uh, uh, this afternoon, we see that low pressure sitting out over to the west. In case you can't see it, Lake Michigan is there sort of in the middle of the middle of the shot. It's a little bit difficult to see. Uh, that low pressure, that's the one that brought uh, the marginally light rains to Chicago and, and southern Wisconsin this week. Um, but that's all moving out to the uh, east now, and we're looking at this high pressure, and this is going to be what we're looking at for tomorrow. That high is going to be moving uh, basically to the south-southeast. It looks like right now it's going to move very close to or just to the south of Chicago, but a little piece of it might extend out over the lake tomorrow, after, uh, tomorrow midday and make for some light conditions around the start time. This is the uh, uh, picture of the satellite as it stands. At, no, this is all mostly low cloud, and uh, that, that's all moving out. There's no rain on the radar at the moment. It's all confined well down to the south. So those are the current conditions uh, in the synoptic scale. There we go. Uh, this is the wind field. We have a nice northerly. Remember that high is sitting out to the uh, west of us, and so we're on the northern, northerly flow side of that high pressure. And uh, it looks pretty good out in the middle of part of the lake. We've got a little bit of lightness, thermally generated lightness along the shore uh, this afternoon, but uh, out in the middle part of the lake, it stayed basically in sort of the 10 to 15 knot range. Sea state has picked up uh, quite a bit since that northerly is filled across the lake. So uh, we do have some waves uh, developing um, so sort of in the two to four foot range. Um, I think by tomorrow, again, it looks like that northerly is going to be dropping out overnight and tomorrow morning, so the sea state should be uh, a lot friendlier for you, at least for the start. Uh, water temperatures, we always need to talk about these on the lake for this time of year. Uh, remember, when the wind is light, the sea breezes and land breezes become very important around uh, Lake Michigan. And um, right now, the water temperatures are actually fairly warm in the southern part of the lake for the most part, uh, a bit cooler up to the north. It's important to understand how the lake temperatures relate to the, to the development of sea breezes, lake breezes and land breezes. Obviously, if there is a cold lake, we get more lake breezes, stronger lake breezes developing. But the land breezes, the nighttime flows off the land aren't, aren't as strong, whereas if we have uh, cold water, or sorry, warm water, the opposite is true. The land breezes get a little bit more important. This year, I don't think we need to worry too much about that until, unless, as I said, maybe for the very start of uh, tomorrow, for a few hours, we may get a light lake breeze. After that, it looks like the breeze picks up, and it'll only be the slowest of you, you poor souls, that uh, uh, get into some very light conditions getting into the finish in, in Mackinac. So this is the forecast chart for tomorrow morning. Uh, that low pressure that's out over Ontario is moving uh, to New England. And uh, we have that high pressure, which is over Minnesota. As I said, it's going to be kind of moving to the south-southeast. And uh, a little piece of it may just kind of settle over the southern part of the lake. We're going to look at that a little bit more closely later on. The other thing I want to point out to you here is this cold front up across Ontario. Uh, that feature is going to play a significant role for us in this race. It's going to drop down from the north, and uh, we're going to see some uh, strong northerly winds eventually develop on the lake. But as this high moves away, or moves down to the south, I should say, eventually we get a nice southerly flow developing tomorrow, later tomorrow afternoon and into um, uh, the evening hours ahead of that cold front. So there's actually a period of nice running conditions uh, uh, during the uh, latter half of tomorrow until that front arrives and then you get the uh, northerly shift and you're going to be going upwind in some pretty fresh conditions, I believe. 
That's the good news, okay. Um, <laughs> so we've got the, this is the surface wind forecast for tomorrow morning. And uh, you'll see that uh, basically we have that northerly flow with the high moving to the south now, that northerly backs around more into a westerly up across the central part of the lake. It's a little bit lighter, but still northerly over the southern part of the lake. And um, I'm zooming in now so that we're looking just around the start area uh, at 11 o'clock tomorrow. And I've got a, uh, for this model, I've got a couple of hourly shots here to kind of show you what's, what's going on. If you look very close here, just, it's, it's very, very light. We're down under five knots uh, or in most of this area. If you look very close, you'll see a little high pressure circulation. In fact, there's a small isobar sitting over the uh, southern part of the lake. Uh, we refer to this as a bubble high, and you can see a little bit of a circulation uh, developing over there. The land is going to be heating up, and uh, we may start to try and develop a really weak lake breeze. Now, at midday, um, you can see a, a little bit more of that diverging flow out from that, that little weak high pressure area, and a southeasterly lake breeze trying to develop along the... Uh, along the shore just uh, off of Chicago right here. Now if you look up to the north, you'll see uh, sort of southwest winds across the central part of the lake. They're still westerly over the eastern shore, but they'll be backing into the southwest. That's that new gradient I was talking about that you're eventually going to hook into. In fact, what this lake breeze does, if indeed it forms, it helps to pull that breeze down the shoreline. Um, so the idea is to get north into that that pressure and then you can take that pressure north and you'll see in the bigger uh, picture here how that breeze plays into the uh, race overall. And that should say 1300, my bad, up across the top there. That's actually 1300. Uh, but you'll see that the um, south southeasterly flow here with the lake breeze is actually pulling more pressure, kind of back building down uh, the lake shore um, in here. So this the initial formation of lake breeze uh, kind of helps to draw that stronger gradient down to you uh, tomorrow. Now we're at 1300, so this is that same time period, but now we're looking at the full lake, and uh, the high is sitting uh, down here to the south of Chicago, I believe, and maybe a little piece of it over the extreme southern part of the lake. But most of the lake now is, is shifted into a south-southwest flow, uh, and is starting to build. And as I said, this stronger pressure here is gonna be filling down uh, into the southern part of the lake. So as you sail away from Chicago, you should be gradually getting into that, that stronger pressure, which is gonna um, allow you to run pretty quickly toward the north. Saturday evening, that high pressure is moved to Indiana, um, as you can see here. And so that we have prefrontal gradient as the front moves in, across Lake Superior and into the upper peninsula of Michigan. And you'll see this little green area, that's that area, remember, where that was highlighted for the possibility of severe weather. So there may be some showers and thunderstorms developing just ahead of that front. The good news is the air mass is fairly dry, so whatever develops will be kind of scattered and won't last very long. And also it's very thermally dependent. In other words, it needs the land to heat up and to develop the convection to drive those thunderstorms. As soon as the cells move over the lake, they'll weaken, which is cooler, they'll weaken very quickly. And also once the sun sets, um, the ones over the land will also weaken very quickly. So it looks like we're just a fairly narrow window uh, tomorrow evening and maybe into the early night of uh, Saturday night that uh, it, we're at risk for possibly experiencing something. So here's the wind field. I've took my finger and drew a really nice frontal analysis on here. Very high tech, using the latest in meteorological technology. So you can see a nice uh, south flow, which is uh, coming up the lake here. And, um, but behind this front, you'll see a northerly starting to develop. And uh, that will drop south. Uh, over time that front now here's the precipitation so the color on this one is indicating where it's been raining in the prior three hours prior to uh, 7 p.m. Saturday so that's where those cells may develop across the uh, UP of Michigan and then 
um, northern Wisconsin and moving, moving toward the south-southeast with the front. But like I said, it looks like this area here, especially once it moves over the lake, will kind of dry, dissipate and, and dry out. By uh, midnight on uh, Sunday, the front moves basically down to the southern third of the lake, and uh, we have a very abrupt shift to the north with nice pressure. This is 20 to 25 knots uh, uh, on the nose, uh, developing and filling down uh, the lake. And also remember, with that fetch, it's a pretty long fetch, the sea state's going to come up fairly quickly. Uh, so it will get quite rough uh, going into Sunday. So there will probably be small craft advisories issued by the Weather Service just to indicate the strong winds and the rough seas um, for Sunday. This is the forecast for Sunday morning. You'll see the front moving south, and then here's the high, the next high moving into the north of Lake Superior. And that's, so we're getting northerly winds uh, uh, in the circulation around that high. And here's the wind field at that same time. Little different model has the front a little bit more advanced. I believe this over the analysis that I showed just then, but same thing, you have strong 20 to 25 knot a northerly flow basically across the entire lake at that time. And then that flow continues into Sunday uh, midday and uh, so you can you can see the strong flow coming down from the north, so still on the nose. A uh, little bit lighter up to the north uh, now as that high is starting to build in up there. And here is Sunday evening, same picture basically. So. Once that front goes through, you have a 18 to 24 hour period of decent northerly breeze on the lake. There's really no way to, no way to escape it. And then Monday morning, um, that high moves up across the UP of Michigan here. And uh, then we start to see the wind field collapse as that high moves out and the gradient shifts more to the southeast across the lower peninsula of Michigan. So the weather map for Monday shows that high moving into uh, uh, Wisconsin or the northern part of the lake. Now, this is where the forecast starts to diverge a little bit. One of the things we look at to see how much confidence we can have in the overall weather forecast is how consistent things develop. And things have been very consistent this week, so we have a bit higher confidence in the forecast up until about Monday. Um, there will be some differences in timing, for example. The front may move a little faster or a little slower um, than what the models show, but they all show this front coming through. There's no question that it's going to come through. But the position of this high for uh, Monday is a bit critical. Um, some are showing it moving more out to the west here. Others are showing it moving more across uh, the UP of Michigan and even into Ontario. And of course, depending on where it is will make a difference on how quickly the wind dies and what direction it will take uh, as it gets to, as you get up toward uh, Gray's Reef and across to the Max Strait. Um, right now, uh, the forecast shows the uh, flow still from the north, but remember we had uh, solid pressure up here uh, just a few hours ago, and uh, now it's really starting to collapse very quickly on Monday and that high will move, basically try and settle over the cooler water of the lake on Monday, and that's when we go into lake breezes. So uh, what we're seeing here on Monday up in the upper part of the lake is a southerly breeze along the uh, northern shore in the, in the UP, and then a more northwesterly breeze feeding down into, um, into the lower peninsula of Michigan there with virtually no wind in Min Lake. So we go in, in a uh, sort of period of 12 to 18 hours, we go from 15 to 20 knots to no breeze in this area here. So very quick up and down transitions here, both in direction. We go from an abrupt shift from a south-southwesterly with reasonably good pressure, say 15, maybe 20 knots, uh, into a northerly of 20 to 25 um, knots. That lasts for uh, almost 24 hours, 18 to 24 hours. And then we, that wind field collapses and we get very light winds and that the only driving thing are local lake breezes. And if you happen to be one of the slower boats uh, arriving to Max Strait, um, you'll probably spend a lot of time salivating 
um, looking at the bridge and wondering when you're actually going to get there. Uh, and you can see here on Monday that things don't really change very much to Monday evening. There's still lake breezes developing on both the Michigan uh, shores and light winds in the middle. Um, it looks like the pressure for the boats doing the supermax stay up uh, over Lake Huron a little bit better because that high is sitting uh, basically up in this area, so they're actually taking new gr or, or lingering gradient down uh, toward Port Huron. So for Tuesday morning, um, just at the end here, um, the, uh, the highs moved out to the east, and then we have a new southwesterly uh, developing ahead of this next front, and actually you can see that. Uh, in this area of the wind field. That's the new southwesterly flow that eventually will fill across. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to skip that because I hope no one's still out there at that time. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> All right. So here's, the, uh, here's some routes that I ran using three different, three different polars. The red polar is the slow boat. Don't ask me which polar it is, because I don't remember, but it's a slow one. Um, the, the yellow one is sort of a medium uh, paced boat, and the green one is a uh, fast boat. So the green one might finish the race in a little over a day. Um, say the red one finishes in uh, two, two and a half days, something like that. Um, so basically, as I said, down here at the bottom, you're basically hooking into that, that new pressure, that southerly, and trying to take it north, uh, basically going into a building south, southwesterly breeze. You'll need to watch for some uh, thunderstorms possibly uh, developing uh, and moving into the lake Saturday evening. Again, I said it's, it seems like it's a low risk that they'll actually survive onto the lake, but definitely worth, worth watching. Then we have that uh, you basically sail up to a front, and where I've put these arrows is where uh, each one of these different um, boats hits the front. So you'll be hitting the front basically about halfway up. And then up to the north here, uh, there's it's, this is prolonged period of 20 to 25 knots of uh, northerly wind on Sunday, and some very rough seas developing up in this section here. And then, as I said, later Sunday and overnight into Monday, especially on Monday, that wind will be collapsing up here across the northern part of the lake, and it'll get very light with some possible lake breezes. So, uh, as I said, a bit of everything. Um, that's the forecast. I hope you have some good luck. And remember, if you see any good cloud formations, I love weather porn, so send those to me directly. All right? Thank you.